Yes, well, hello again. Jim Burns here. What we got going on here today is a post-war coupler assembly. The uh, spring has sprung. It no longer functions. And I get a lot of uh, questions on how to do, how to replace these springs. People seem to have some trouble with it, but uh, this is the way I do it. I don't know if I can point it out to you or not. This here, I don't know, can, can you see right here? That's the spring. Right in there between the hand, right here, and the knuckle. And then the pin goes down through here. So, what we're going to do is pull this pin and re we'll reuse this pin so there's no, no reason to throw them away and replace them if, if they're not bent real bad or crushed or damaged in any way. And a lot of times on these uh, couplers if it's the original pin you'll see on the other side some extra of the pin sticking out and if you push that a little bit there you can see the head of the pin now has moved up a little bit so what we're going to do is get our tool here that I use to pull that pin the rest of the way out hopefully without bending it and harming it in any way and then uh, we'll reinsert it when we're ready to put our new spring in okay let's try that This here is the tool I use. It's an old set of uh, wire strippers. Pretty old now. They're still around, you can still buy them, but these have seen better days and not sharp anymore. They're just kind of useless as wire strippers. But they're still handy for things like this. Alright. So what we're going to try and do... Let me move the light up out of the way so I can see what's going on here. Alright, we're gonna see if I can do this without shaking too much. Well, we'll push that pin from underneath hopefully get it to stay up it keeps wanting to fall down grab it with these wire strippers and that little notch there I don't know if you can see that notch in the stripper get that under the head like that and just start prying on it real gently it'll come sooner or later but just pull on it you have to pry on it just a little bit and then as it gets higher don't need the wire I use this little needle file gives me some more prying power and yeah, we'll pull it up yeah, it's coming Okay, it's pretty far up right now. Let's see if that's enough. If we can get it to come out the rest of the way. We're pretty far out. Let's see if we can pull it the rest of the way. Sometimes if you turn them. Maybe just a little more prime.
There it is. Okay. Uh, see if you can see all this. The hand is right here. Now it's on the table. And the spring and pin are there. You can see that. Alright. So what we'll do is we'll just pull the pin the rest of the way out. Once it's out of the hand, it's pretty easy to remove. It just comes out. But you'll notice on the end of it here, it's splayed out right at the very edge. That's where it was riveted originally. Okay. Now if you try to reuse this as is, you're going to have trouble getting that back in the hole. Through the spring, through the hand, into the knuckle. So what I do, let's see if I can, oh, yeah, we'll go this way, is I take the moto tool with a cutoff wheel on it. This is just an old battery operated one. You don't need anything, a lot of power or anything. So we'll just turn this on low. And just give it a spin around there. Just to knock that splayed area off of the end of it. Don't cut your fingers or anything. Don't stay on there too long. This pin will heat up and burn the hell out of it. Okay. Now it's more of a cone shape. Which is what we want. If I can show you there. got more of a cone shape to it now but the hole's still there and then when we reinsert this we'll take our little punch and just knock it in there and make it the new rivet it'll cinch up see if I can get some more light on that how about if we zoom in a little bit huh? Yeah, that's better. Yeah, you can see I knocked that splayed area off and just kind of made it a little cone shape just by twirling it up against the cutoff wheel. And like I say, that uh, our hole is still in there and we have enough to rivet it back in place once we're done. Alright, so now we'll get our new spring. There's our pin. There's our hand. That's in good shape. Now you'll notice here there's a little area. Sorry about the shaping. Uh, got problems. <laughs> But anyway, there's a little area here, this little indentation right here behind the hand. And this is where the, uh, right here, the pin will go through that hole and the uh, spring sits in this little indentation right here. Okay? So that's what we got to get that in place. It's not hard. It's, it's really not that hard. So this is uh, what we got to do, but first, before we do anything, oh, here's the coupler. Now if I can show you this one, uh, not the coupler, but the spring. Uh, 
Let me put it on here. Okay, you see that? There's supposed to be an, a long end which goes into the pocket of the coupler body and then this short end here point these things out if I can this short end here sh should have a 90 degree bend on it and that's what pushes up against the hand part of the coupler and pushes it out when you release the trigger on there so that's flattened out it's no good if we try to reshape it, we probably could. It might last a little while, but this is an original spring. We're not going to bother. We'll put a new one in. And then this straight part here, this longer straight piece here, that goes inside the body of the coupler. Down inside here. This is what I mean by the pocket. Okay, and then the uh, the ninety degree part pushes up against the coupler on this end here, and it'll pivot on the pin, but that ninety degree part will push on this and cause the uh, hand to open so I've got to get that fixed was I pointing at the right place I think so <laughs> anyway now this is the new coupler spring you can see it's 90 degrees apart from each other once again here's the long end goes in the pocket right there and then I don't know if you can tell but there's a another 90 degree piece sticking up see if I can get, get you a better look at it there you go, you see that? Oh! But I think you saw it, anyway. Alright. Right here. That's bent up 90 degrees. Alright, and that's the part that pushes on the hand, and this will go in the pocket, and then the tension will be push the hand open as you pull the trigger on there. Alright, so we've got to get that in there. That's the new one. But we'll get that out of the way for now. The old one out of our way. But this looks kind of dirty here. We're gonna, it's not too bad. I've seen a lot worse. <laughs> but we're going to clean this up. We'll clean our coupler body up. We'll get that cleaned up. We'll get the pocket in here cleaned up and where the pin sits. And uh, get the bottom of this. Then we'll pull this open. the trigger here and we'll clean that pin get all the dirt off of that because we're gonna put some light oil on all this after it's all assembled so it works real nice but we'll clean all that all right so now what I use to clean everything Hold on, I'll go get one. 
Okay, I'm back. Now I use these uh, alcohol swabs. They're real cheap at the store. I get these at Walmart. Or maybe I got these at... Uh... No, I forget where I got them. It's either Walmart or Rite Aid where I get my prescription. Get our pin out of the way. I just lay it in here like this. Take my pointer. And we'll just go in here and clean all of this up. All the old oil and dirt that has accumulated over the years. Get that all cleaned up. There's a little bit of rust in there. Oh no, that must have been grease. It came off. All right. We'll wipe off the spring for the trigger. That's what this is right here. This spring here allows the trigger to come back after you engage it. So we'll put this down in here. Get this all cleaned up, up against the body. Alright. That's looking pretty. And we'll just go around and clean our knuckle body off here. Our coupler body, anyway. down in all the grooves. It's amazing how much dirt these accumulate over the years. This is off of a 1956 or 57 uh, car that I had. So, it's an old one. Right. And we'll just kind of rub this in here where everything mates up. And we'll get our pad down inside there where the spring and the pin go and the hand. Clean that up. Clean the bottom here. Get our side frames cleaned off. Our end frames. Then we'll uh, use our file again, open up our trigger pin. Like that. And just get this wiped off. Try to send the pad in behind there to get the rest of the pin cleaned up. And we'll pull the file out of there. Work this around inside there. Get it all nice and clean. Alright. Looking good. Hi, Pika. Did you come to say hello to everyone? You did. All right. And then we'll get these two little 
areas cleaned up here in the casting. That looks good. Get our little fuzzies off from our pan. Yeah, it's looking real nice now. Nice and shiny, nice and clean. All right. Looking good. Nice and clean down in there. Our trigger is working real good. Alright. So now comes the fun part, and that's putting the spring, the pin, and the hand back together through that knuckle. <laughs> Alright. Let's work on that. Okay. What I did here is I took some vice grips and I just uh, pinch on this very lightly the body of the coupler assembler here and that's just uh, as you can see that just holds it in place let me try to get a better position of the camera here there we go Try to keep it in the center if we can. I'll get my light in position. Hopefully not blocking anything. Okay, so now our first mission here is to slide our pin in from the top. It's just protruding just a little bit there. And then what I do is I I use this line or this gear lube because it's uh, pretty thick and I want it to hold everything in place the pin and the spring while I'm fooling around trying to hold everything together can be a pain so I just put a little drop on her right on that pin You can probably see how thick that was. It it's actually gets a little stringy. Alright, then we take our coupler spring. Alright, let's try this again. We'll get our coupler spring here. Put it over the pin if we can. There it is. Alright. Twist it around so the long piece goes into the coupler pocket. We'll pull our pin way back out. Just so the end of the pin is even with the end of the number of coils on the spring. So it's sitting right there. All right, we'll take our alcohol, clean up our hand here. Get that pocket area cleaned up. Alright, now when you're doing this, this is the pocket here where the spring and the, will sit. See that? But when you're doing this, don't worry about getting this tang that the spring rests against. Don't worry about getting that in the pocket at first. Just get your spring 
and your pin position. So I just leave it out like this. Get it in there at an angle. Slide it in there. And then once the spring is pinched in there, then you can just wiggle this around a bit. Push down on the tang. You don't want the pin to engage, you just want everything kind of sitting there. There you go. Get the tang back in there. Now our pin is through the spring, down through the hand, and back out the bottom. See there? And if it's working all right, pull the trigger. Yay, it opens up. Very nice. Working real good. All right, now what I do, take a metal block of some sort, this piece of the aluminum I have here, hold the pin so it doesn't slide back out, but that lube should hold it in place. I don't need the uh, vice grips on here anymore. Get them out of the way. Get you back in the picture here. We'll rest that on there. All right. And then uh, we can use our vice grips and our needle nose as a just to keep this somewhat the same plane, so it doesn't drop down. All right. Then, I just use this little old screwdriver here, a real cheap old one, but it's small enough to engage the hole in the pin. Alright, got my little brass hammer here. I'll get this engaged in the hole, and thusly. Give it a couple of wraps, spreads it out. The pins now locked in place. Coupler works fine. All right. Then I'll oil this all up after I'm done cleaning the wheels and everything, putting them back on, putting the truck side frames on, the bolsters, all that stuff. Get it all oiled up once I'm done. Alright, so I hope that helps you. Maybe it gives you a couple ideas how to do this. It's not that hard, not that frustrating. It can be done. Now this is this for this style of coupler. There's other styles. Uh, like the electric couplers, they use a little coil spring. That's, that's different, but it's not hard either. Maybe I'll do a video on that too. But uh, this one's done. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope this helps. Take care. Toodles.